Hello, everyone. It looks like we've got audio. I'm going to wait to get too far into this to make sure to hear from somebody to tell me it's working Um, because we know every single time that I make the assumption, those are the times that audio is all screwed up. Okay, looks like we are good. So tonight we are working in watercolor with colored pencil on top. This is one of my favorite mixed mediums. I love, you guys know I love ink tents, but colored pencil sticks on top of color of watercolor better than it does to on top of ink tents for some, for whatever reason. So that is what we're doing tonight. We're going to be drawing a clownfish. If you have, if you're going to be painting along with me, the reference photo can be found over at my website, lawcurry.com. And the link is in the video description directly to to this reference photo. The supplies that I'm using are listed in the video description. I'm going to be working with Schminka, Schminky, Schmink, Schminka, I think is how you say it, watercolors. And you can see I've got here my color chart so I know which colors to use. And to remember this one, this indigo is not light fast. I can't use that one. So this chart is very necessary. If you have not already done this, if you watercolor a lot, you can see I've got my watercolor palette here, one of them, and then I've got my smaller one with browns and blacks and some of the other colors there. If you don't watercolor often, um, especially if you're like me, there is no way you're going to remember which one's which. So that's why I took, I actually downloaded, uh, this comes with, when you get the watercolor from Schminka anyway, and you can find them online. I've downloaded the image here, just the blank image, and made my own with that to, um, to keep track of which color was what. And especially in this case, like this is a color I probably, I need to just remove it from the palette so I don't accidentally use it. But it's too, like not light fast at all. It's, it's the only one I bought that I really screwed up on. I think the rest were fair. That one's questionable. But I mean, for the most part, I'm okay, except that one. So anyway, um, these are super, super handy to just make your little color samples. Plus, it's something that I can reference as I work. What color is what? I also recommend when you watercolor, let me find one. I like to have just a scratch piece of paper. This is the same paper that I'm going to be painting on off to the side so I can test in case I'm not sure how a color is going to look when it actually hits the paper, especially if I'm mixing colors. So here is my clownfish. Now, just as a reminder, you are able, oops, let me put this somewhere where I can see it. You can bid on this guy over on my website during the live stream. Link is in the video description and I actually may have, hold on, let me see. There's something on there. I probably can't change it now anyway that I meant to change earlier. Give me one second. Let me log in really quick. It's taking a minute. Come on. There we go. I do want to see for this. Um, where is the item? I think I can change it. I, it was one of those things that I meant to do right before we I started. Let's see. Oh, no, it was fine. Okay, I don't need to worry about any of that. So let me back out of that. That auction is ready to go. Starting bid is, is set at $55, which is crazy inexpensive. This is a five by seven. Normally something like this when it's done, assuming it comes out good, it should. But that's something I would probably sell for closer to 200. So you can get something for pretty cheap. Also, I will be having a uh, live and I'll be all over social media this week reminding you doing the countdown, but I have so much stuff for the live sale next weekend or next week, next Wednesday. We're doing the live sale, lots of acrylic paintings. I've got a few things in colored pencil. I've got a few things in, in a lot of different mediums. So I'm super excited about that. And okay, we can get started, I think. I think that goes over everything. So this is on Arches Hot Press 140 pound watercolor paper. I did not pre-stretch it. Now it claims it's pre-stretched. It's gonna warp. I'm gonna use a hair dryer to dry it back in place. And what I've done is used pH neutral tape around the edges so that when it does dry, it's really gonna pull back into that flat shape. If I was painting loose, this is not going to dry flat. It would kind of curve and warp really crazy. So because it is taped down and because it's on the smaller side, it should dry perfectly flat. I find that when you go to something that's a lot larger, you're more likely to have 
have warping that you can't quite fix. Actually, one of the the things I'm going to be selling next week is the Warbler. I did in colored pencil over an airbrush background. I am majorly discounting that for what I normally would a colored pencil that size because it warped permanently and I couldn't completely fix it. You can only notice it at certain angles, but it is something that happens with watercolor paper. Pre-stretching your paper is probably what most of us should be doing. I just don't. So there we go. <clears throat> And it doesn't necessarily damage. Like when you look at it right front on, you can't notice it just from certain angles, the way the light hits, you can tell the paper's a little bit wavy in it, uh, one area. Anyway, here we go. Let's go ahead and get started on this. And we have major storms coming through. It may not hit us. Hopefully it doesn't. So if, if for some reason power goes out or anything like that here, um, I will finish the video edit. Well, when the power comes back, I will finish it and then just upload it later for you guys. So that's the plan at this point. So now let's go through my brushes. I just have a pile over here. Let's see what I want. Um, let's see. I'm going to go really heavy with the pinks and purples on my anemone. I'm just pulling out a few brushes here that I may end up using. Okay, there's a few that I think will be handy. Now what I do when I work in watercolor, I use distilled water. I do not recommend using regular tap water. There are metals in the tap water. There are chlorine or chl uh, chloramine, depending on where you're at. There are things that may, we don't know how that's going to affect the work or potentially cause yellowing or fading with the work. Sometimes people report something as not being light fast when really it was. It's that they basically used chemical water on their, their work. So that could potentially damage your work. So what I've got are these two little, is that not showing? Oh no, I've got the wrong thing open. Hold on. I'm just dumb. There we go. I've got these two little jars, little tiny bell mason jars, and I keep one for cleaning the brushes and one for loading the brush. You do want two when you're doing this because when you're rinsing out your brush, that water will stain the, the watercolor. The way that we build this in trans translucent layers, that will make a difference in that end result. If your water starts to get green and then you're layering it over something that's yellow, that green will show up and will tint the color. If you're working in acrylic paintings, I don't worry about it. If I'm working in ink tents, I don't worry about it. Watercolor, I absolutely worry about it. So my distilled water and my little mason jars, one for cleaning the brush, one for loading the brush. So let me go ahead and get my lids off of these. And distilled water is very inexpensive. I think it's about a dollar for a gallon. Oops, that's loading, that's cleaning. Let me put them in the right location. And okay. So what I'm going to do, I have drawn this. I did not use water soluble graphite like I often do for my background because I'm gonna just paint over this loosely. We're on a time limit tonight and this would be a very kind of time consuming project. So I'm going to wash over all of this. What color do I want? I want these two here. So the two. Yeah, these two look good. And I'm gonna start with my anemone in the background. Now, I actually do recommend painting when possible with watercolor. I would prefer to put paint flat, but because of my back, it's not really an option for me, so I'm not going to worry about that. But if you are able to paint flat, it's easier. You can use a little bit more water without worrying about it running. I mean, not that you really should have it running that much with watercolor, but there are certain techniques that working upright in an easel like this makes it kind of impractical. I'm not even worried about staying inside the lines because I will be cleaning all of this up with colored pencil later. Oh wait, that part's clownfish. And that's one of the things that I love about doing this watercolor underpainting. Well, one, it saves a lot of time in the overall like actual painting process. Um, with colored pencil, filling something in like this would take a very long time. But the other thing is that it lifts. So let's say there's an area like I went where the clownfish goes. I can add a little bit of water, lift that right up. Really handy. And I'm not going to be using black on this background print. I don't think I'll use it at all. I would probably use other colors because if that black blends in with my oranges, it's gonna look funky. People who are good at watercolor probably are cringing watching my technique. 
It's okay. It's going to be pretty. I promise. If it's staying inside the light, see, that's starting to run. I've got too much water on my brush for working upright at an easel like this. Uh, this one, yeah, this one comes down. And I'm going to do a couple of layers over this to get the color saturation where I want. Um, let's see. What is what over here? This is one of the things I really like too. See here, I had that deeper line. I can get rid of that. Just working over it. That would not work with ink tents. There are certain things I like, like that are easier with colored or with watercolor than ink tents, and then certain things that I find ink tents easier. That is one of the pro sides for me with watercolor. Okay, I'm gonna start building up, and I can do this while it's still wet. Let's start getting some of this color a bit darker in a few of these areas. So where I want it less translucent, I'm gonna use less water. Okay, I'm gonna dry this. Actually, I'm gonna rinse that brush and then I'm gonna dry this. And then we'll start refining this a bit better. So let me mute this. And whoops, now it's nice and flat and I can still see my graphite line. So that's going to be something that you want to consider when you are working in watercolor. Do you want your lines to stay put? Use a regular graphite pencil. If you want your lines to disappear as you're painting, so you there's no chance of you seeing them, use a water-soluble graphite pencil. You could also use a watercolor pencil in that case. But one so that is going to dissolve, whereas these, I will be able to see these lines. And I used an H pencil, so not too super dark, not super light. Um, and knowing that I'm going to go over this with colored pencil, that is going to get rid of most, you're really not going to see these lines in the end. But depending on what you're doing, let's say I'm doing a, like yellow rose, those lines you're going to be able to see. So I would, in that case, probably go with something that's water soluble. So that's kind of the difference there. But here I knew based on the time it would take me to get something like this done, I needed to be able to work quick. And that meant I needed to be able to fill in the entire thing quickly. So... I like to state the obvious. Now let's go ahead and start defining some of these things. Now you want to make sure when you're mixing medium like mediums like this, you want everything with the watercolor done before you start with the colored pencil. So that is important. Let's go ahead and start putting in some of these darker areas. I just want to pick a spot, which I could probably just go over everything at this point still. Just darken it all up and then lift where I want it. There's so many options on how you see like how rich that is where there's not as much water. Uh, or yeah, that's that was the right way to word that. I'm gonna take a brush with water and spread that a bit. Like I said, I'm going to go with more of the, the magentas and the pinks on mine than the, the deeper purples in the reference photo. And that reference is just a guideline. I don't need it to be exact. I need it to get an idea of the shape and movement here. If I was going to spend more time, I would probably go ahead and worry about things being exact. But, you know, we've got a little over an hour to get this done. You want it to look good without fussing over tiny details in the case of something like this.
And I'm basically just pick a spot and, and fill it in and shade it. And I'm going to work my way around this way so I start creating that look of the anemone tentacles. And this area is going to be way darker. I'm not going to go ahead and load the brush with the other colors that will go in here to darken that. Now the cool thing too, when we go over this with colored pencil, I can use odorless mineral spirits to blend my colored pencil and it works just fine and it will not affect the watercolor. Whereas if I used water, water will cause this to lift up, but the OMS will not. Magic. I mean, there's science involved, but I'm going to go with magic. Sounds more fun. And see how I'm just lifting some of that? I can do the tentacle. Fill that in. Now this piece, whoever bids on it or wins, will come in a mat of your choice, black or white. I found the white ones today. I didn't even know I had. I just ordered black ones. Um, I'll let you see when we get further in what that will look like. So you would just, whoever wins, just let me know which color you prefer. We'll try them both on. Now, when it comes to your watercolor brushes, you do not want to mix. I mean, you wouldn't be really using the same brushes anyway, but you don't want to mix your watercolor brushes with your oil painting brushes or your acrylic brushes. Some brushes you can mix, like uh, your watercolor, water-soluble graphite, graphy tint, ink tints. I'll mix all of those together without any issues. But I'm not going to share those with my acrylic brushes or my oil painting brushes. That's a good way to, to ruin those brushes. So um, it'll ruin your watercolor brushes. So those I don't mix. And then when it comes to, let's say, oil and acrylic painting, I will not mix my oils and acrylics. Those have, I have a separate set for each. The oil paint over time hardens the brushes really bad. So it, it can really damage the brushes that you want a bit softer for your acrylics. Because acrylic is a softer paint, you typically want softer brushes. Not always, but a lot of the time. If you have any questions, leave them now, and Joseph and Nick are collecting them, and then I'll go over them and answer them after we're done with the artwork portion. So if it feels like I'm ignoring you, I actually am, but only temporarily. I'll come back and answer questions in a bit. Can you imagine if I was doing this just in colored pencil, how long this section here would you have already taken to fill this in? I'm just using a little bit of water. I lifted, I want to lift some of this to get a bit of shading. Get some highlights in there. Yeah, I'm sure this will come out really good. I'm already ha really happy with how this is coming out. Now I'm going back and forth between my two colors. I don't know what they are. They're number, I mean, I know the numbers, number 367 and number 474 with the Schmincke. Uh, these are, I don't know the actual names though, but I'm going, I'm getting a mixture of the two. And I don't mean just mixing the two straight together. Like some of these have a little bit more of a red tint. Some have more of the purple magenta tint intentionally to make sure I get a little bit of variation in here. Okay, watercolor might be the perfect medium for painting anemones because it's really easy to get that translucent look with this. And I'm using two brushes here. The first one is a 
Mimic, is that what that is? Mimic, Creative Mark, Half Inch Filbert. And then the other one is weird. No wonder it's getting floppy. It's a master's touch round, so it's not one of my better brushes. Let me switch. Yeah, that's gonna have more firm. That one will be more firm. I'm gonna switch over to my black velvet, the silver black velvet. That one is a round brush. That's gonna be easier for me to control. That should hold its shape a bit better than the cheapy generic Hobby Lobby one I was just using. Or the switch to the Mimic too. That one was not cleaned properly the last time I used it. Whoops. Can you guys hear the dart frogs chirping in the background? I don't know if this mic picks them up or not. They are losing their minds right now. I'm just adding that and then I'm taking the clean brush with water. Now, any of these areas, when it dries, and actually, I'm going to take a dryer to it, I can still lift it, um, lift that paint with watercolor. If I were not going to go over this with my colored pencil, I would pay a bit more attention. Like I'd be a lot more careful about keeping lines and such clean. But being that I know I am gonna go over this, close is all I need. Like there's really no reason for me to spend a lot of time perfecting anything. I love that. Can you see how dark these edges are just from lifting what's in the center? And for an anemone, for what I'm doing with this, that is perfect. It makes everything so much easier. It's like shading, but really easy. I mean, it is shading, not like shading, but it's really easy. It makes me excited. And just taking water. Every few brush strokes, I am having to dab that off on my paper towel. Now you often hear me say with colored pencil, just use um, colored pencil or oil, oil painting. With OMS, you wanna make sure you're using Viva paper towel, not with watercolor. With watercolor, use like Bounty. Use your normal, everyday kitchen uh, paper towels. That absorbs the water much better. But when we're absorbing OMS, that's when I like the Viva paper towel. Okay, let's see. getting some of these darker bits back here and I can come back and darken and define things even more. You can layer with your watercolor really well. It's just that you have to be careful not to overwork an area because it will lift. Now 
And if you struggle with paintbrushes, I know a lot of people, especially if they've stuck with pencils because paintbrushes are just like complicated for them and just controlling them seems awkward. It's awkward for everybody when we get started. The more you paint, the easier that's going to get for you to control those brushes. But the only way you're going to get there is to get out of your comfort zone and paint some things that are going to be really ugly. It's normal to feel like you don't have control of a paintbrush when you're starting. And while how long it takes will depend to an extent on the individual, uh, for everyone, the longer, the more you do it, the faster you're going to get the hang of it and get comfortable with it. But if you're ever feeling like, nope, that's not for me, I'm not good at a paintbrush, no one is. No one starts out good with a paintbrush. We all feel super awkward. This is a really good way too, if you're considering color or considering working with watercolor, this is a really good way to go with the mixed medium because you're not as dependent on being good at the watercolor to get good results. You just need to half do it, have something that's moderately presentable, and then you're going to fix everything up with your colored pencil. Just keep dabbing the paintbrush on my paper towel. Remove some of that water and pigment where I want to lift some. And see how my edges are real messy there? No big deal. too much water it's spreading a bit more than I want there now the type of watercolor you're using is going to make a big difference in how much you enjoy the process too I avoided watercolor for years I had painted some uh, they were questionable. Oddly enough, my mom recently framed them and hung them. There was a frog and a sea turtle. But they, I used some kind of cheap, it wasn't Crayola, but it was kind of the equivalent of a Crayola type watercolor. And I just couldn't get the pigment where I wanted. I couldn't control them. I couldn't do any, like nothing was working how I wanted it to work. And I quickly gave up on them and just for years didn't bother again. I mean, we're talking 15 years before I even thought of picking them up again. Actually, the thing that made me pick them up again was I started getting really comfortable with ink tents and decided, okay, I think I can manage watercolor. And sure enough, yeah, that practice did help. But the, the other thing was the, the quality of paint that I was using. It was such a crappy paint that I had tried years before thinking, well, you can kind of get away. Like if you give me a really terrible acrylic paint, I can still make something that's good. I mean, I don't recommend using it terrible stuff because it does affect your end result, but I can make something that's good with acrylics that it's crappy. Watercolor is way more dependent on quality materials, quality brushes and quality paint, quality paper. Everything is much more picky that you use good supplies when it comes to watercolor than pretty much any other medium. I mean, even you guys know how much I dislike Prismacolor. You can still make amazing stuff with Prismacolor. With watercolor, much less easy to do. And I know some of you will have seen videos where somebody used, you know, Crayola and they did something amazing. Yeah, but you're making your job so much more difficult when it comes to watercolor than anything else um, when it comes to using cheap supplies. So that is definitely one. If you're going to get into watercolor, I do recommend jump into the better stuff because you can't even use, let's say the Crayola, because I know a lot of people are like, well, use something cheaper to find out if you even like it. That, you're, it's really hard to tell if you like it when you're not using proper materials because they do not behave the same. I mean, it's almost like working in a different medium. I'll be pulling a lot of lights in here. The colored pencil, the white colored pencil will show up really well on top of this. Still just using these two same colors.
I think the fun thing about this will be you seeing how sloppy you can be, but it still comes up looking like super amazing, like because of the colored pencil. This is a hot mess right now. Another bonus with these colors, because I've got the magenta right up against where the clownfish is going to go, there are going to be areas where the the orange and the magenta, they're just going to mix together. It's going to happen, especially with how quick I'm going through this. Those colors are gorgeous mixed together. It works perfect for shading. I mean, I'm going to be using these colors intentionally to shade the clownfish, so I don't even have to worry about it. If I was using other tones, let's say more blues and such, that's gonna make a, that you have to be way more careful with not to let that blend into your clown. Here, not even gonna have to worry about it. Right now, these look like weird little wormy shapes. I promise they'll get better. And I know I mentioned that the Schmincke watercolors are like super amazing. I know Daniel Smith also has a really good reputation too. I actually have some that I need to use. I just haven't gotten that far yet. I have so many plans for things I want to do and I just haven't gotten to them. See like right here, I made, I went outside the line there, but it doesn't even matter. Once that clownfish is filled in, you won't even notice. Let's see, that part's clownfish back there. Once I get these in, we can start really making them look good. This is really the slow part here. Just bait blocking in where these anemones get, the tentacles are. So fun fact, anemones are not corals. They are not plants. They are an animal. And I mean, corals are considered animals too, but they're not considered a coral. And clownfish will actually take chunks of food and feed the anemone. It's really cute. They take care of their house. Okay, we're going to dry this. And then we're going to start getting some of these darks way darker. So what's happening right now is everything is fairly flat. We want to start creating that depth in the shape of these guys and the darker areas, like especially down in here. So let's see, what colors do I want to start adding? I think number 371, that's like a dark burgundy. We could start throwing that in there. Where are my brushes? And that one is one, two, three, four, five, six over. Yep, that should work. We have these super dark spots. This will also work really well. I'll use this color to shade a lot of the clownfish.
Yeah, I know somebody mentioned Mind of Watercolor. If you're looking specifically for watercolor tutorials, he's amazing. He's probably the best on YouTube for watercolors. I'm really curious to see if this looks better in a white or a black mat. I have no idea. And the, it'll be fun to look at the difference too because the white versus black, it'll make you notice different areas. Let's see, that's clownfish there. Okay. It'll pull different parts of the work out. This is why I always recommend when you, you frame your work, take your work. Let's say you go to an art supply store to buy a mat. Take the work with you so you can try the mat, different colors of mat on to see what will look good. a little bit of that there we go because different matte colors will make different areas of the artwork really pop out and you want to make sure whatever mat you go with I don't want something that draws attention to the mat and not the artwork. So I'm not going to get all crazy adding pink mats and some of those different random colors. That is not something you'll almost ever see me do in my work. I usually, black and white are my normal go-tos. Rarely another color will work, but I don't do that often. Oops, wrong brush. And these, I mean, I'm using that reference photo as a general guideline. I have moved away now at this point. My shapes are not even cl that close. It's just to get an idea of the movement. And if you've got any questions for me to answer, go ahead and leave those now. I'll be answering them at the end of the live stream. You guys had so many good questions and topics last week. I haven't even finished editing last week's videos. Now remember, whatever you make darker, so like these areas that are dark next to his face, it's going to make his face pop out that much more. So I'm going to put make them even darker. It'll push him forward. Put more water on that brush. 
And my go-to watercolor is the Schmincke that I've used, but I haven't used that many others. So it's not because I've tried tons and I'm giving you good advice. Like this is the best. It's because that was advised to me by my friend who was an excellent watercolor artist. And I took her advice and she has never steered me wrong on a product. She's the one who told me about the webcams to get about, I mean, everything. She gives me the best advice. She is definitely my go-to for lots of stuff. But I didn't know anything about watercolor, about what brands to go with. And so I just got what she told me to. And I freaking love them. But I can't, it's not like if I were to give you a, a colored pencil review, I can tell you why I like one over another. I have no input on that other than this is the one I started using and I loved it. So I haven't tried a bunch of others because it's kind of expensive. It's, you know, being that I have so much of these, I kind of hate to put a bunch of money into other ones just yet. But luckily, Clark Fine Art sent me a really cool, um, she made me a sample pack of some Daniel Smith. So I needed to, to try those. I am looking forward to that. I just haven't done it yet. I'd say it's because I'm lazy because I always make that joke, but I don't take days off, so I don't know if that's a lazy, I can claim that. Okay. I'm going to start pulling a little bit of more purple in this, and then I'm going to start blocking in the clownfish pretty soon here. This video may go a little bit longer tonight. I'm hoping not. I should already apologize to the mods. plan will be to just go through questions faster. I knew this was going to be a long project. I need to pull more of this darker purple in, into a few of these spots. Yeah, Clark Fine Art said that the Daniel Smith watercolors that she sent me will probably last a long time. Yeah, that's the cool thing too with watercolor. It does not take much, like at all. A little bit really does last you, which is nice because when you're looking at the prices, when you're getting your watercolor like set up, you may look at it on the more expensive ones and think, holy crap, that is insane. But it lasts a long time, like a small amount. It's not like, like acrylics where we go through a larger amount. Just want to make sure my color saturation is where I want it in here before I start with colored pencil. The clownfish is actually very quick in comparison to how long the anemones take. Or anemone, it's a single one. It's really easy to get the nice soft edges with watercolor because you can go back over an area where a line is too harsh, easily tone that down. That's one on the plus side for watercolor versus ink tense. It's a little bit harder to do with ink tense. Just lift anywhere like that. I think that's good for my color saturation. I'm gonna, well, actually, oh God, one more spot I want darker. I'll probably lift some of this up when it dries, but I'm gonna go ahead and get the clownfish started. Actually, I'm gonna dry that first.
Thanks, my mic was muted. See, if I did not have this, um, the Discord, that is really helping. But anyway, moving on. I don't think I missed anything. I don't think we missed anything important. So let's get started on the oranges with the um, this guy. Now, what would have happened if I, this may have cut out, so I'm going to mention that. This was the water color left in the container um, that I am using to load my brushes with. If I had not change that out right now with fresh distilled water, there's a good chance that that color would have mixed in with the yellows and oranges. Not the end of the world because those colors do work well, but I wouldn't have gotten my yellows as bright as I wanted. So that's why I went ahead and got myself some fresh water because I was not being careful about which, um, I rinsed the purples a couple too many times in the wrong water. So that's why we want to use two. Okay, now I am going to start with this yellowy purple or yellowy orange color oh that's kind of perfect a little bit more water actually let's make this easy i just wipe that over everything there's no reason for me to be paying attention to what area it needs to go in i do need to keep it from running though like what i'm having happen here the nice thing with this watercolor too, this color looks really accurate on camera for what I'm seeing in person. That was a problem last week. Okay, that is the white. We've got a little bit here will be orange. A little bit back there. Make that color saturation a bit deeper. So it's the same color, it just has less water in it. That's better. I'm missing a line here, so freehand that in. There we go. It's another clownfish fun fact for you. They're typically really mean. If you stick your hand in the tank when you're doing maintenance, they will bite you. Mine are not mean. Mine, well, I wear gloves too. I never put my bare hands in the water, so that's probably part of it. Mine have never gone after me, but I, back in 95, my first clownfish, I had them for several years, they were mean. They were they were wild caught. I don't know if that made a difference. Mine are, are um, captive bred and have been mass, mass, inbreeding to get the colors they are. So I don't know if they're just a little bit slower than other clownfish. I have no idea. That's a theory that doesn't totally make sense because there are plenty of mean designer clownfish. But anyway, mine have not been an issue. But yeah, typically clownfish are one of the meaner tanks or meaner fish you'll have in your tank. They have attitudes. Okay, I can do this while it's still wet. Start layering in the other colors. And they're not just mean to the to people, they're mean to other fish too. Again, not mine, mine are weirdly derpy. Well, my female can be a little bit moody, but not terrible. She just wants all the other fish to stay away from her zone. My male clownfish, he swims alongside of the other fish. He actually annoys them because he likes to rub up against them as he swims. He's a weird little derp. Okay, I'm going to blend this a little bit. Let's make sure that brush is clean. I'm just going to keep building up until I get my color saturation where I want it to be. You are always better to go too light and slowly build up to darker than to go too dark and then try to fix that. 
I mean, even though, yeah, we can lift this, it's a lot easier to darken something than it is to lighten it up. You can use that second brush here that just has water on it. I can just pull the paint around where I want it to be. If you guys have other watercolors that you have used and love, let us know in the comments or in the chat if you're watching live because that... Um, gives people some ideas of other ones they can use. Just because these are my favorite doesn't mean they're the only good ones. They're only my favorite because they're all I've used. That w well, they're the only good ones I've used. I used cheap ones and hated them. I'm just going to let that bleed out. Not that much. A little too much water on there. I'm going to dry that because that is too much water. Now, if some of this orange shows through, the anemone's tentacles are fairly translucent. So if a little orange shows through, like I pull it over here, good, that just looks more realistic. Um, what is this mess I have going on? Okay, right here. That is clownfish. The more I do with the watercolor now, the less time I need to put into the colored pencil later. Another clownfish fun fact for you, they all are males, and as they mature, the dominant fish will become the female. And by dominant, I mean the meanest one. And the bid right now on this guy is $55. I promise he'll be pretty when I'm done. Even if that means, like, even worst case scenario, let's say I don't quite, like, he's a little messy after the live stream. I will, and I actually do that on all of them. I usually go back and make a few adjustments after the stream. I promise he's going to be pretty. Okay, let's see. A little bit more shading here. I'm going to start pulling some magenta in there, and I need magenta both on the white and here. Now, the black that you're seeing, I'm not even going to do that with the watercolor. That is going, I'll do deeper shading on some of this, but the black I'm going to do with the colored pencil. 
Oop, almost rinsed my brush in the wrong water again. Okay. So these are the same colors I used on that anemone. We're gonna get the shading on the clownfish's belly. Just blend that in. And the painting that sold last week, the cactus, oh, I varnished it. It looks so pretty, but I haven't shipped it yet. It's going out tomorrow. I wanted to make sure the varnish is completely dry. I need to start warning people when I do the acrylic painting so that it takes me a bit longer to get those ones shipped out because of the varnish. Notice that I'm doing all my shading with magenta, not black. Black will not give you very good results. You would end up with a muddy, weird, ugly mess. And it's not that I never use black, just not when you're working up against yellows and oranges. Yellows and oranges go to purples and magentas. And I mean, in many cases, magentas and oranges work better anyway for our shading. Not always. Or not magentas and oranges, magentas and purples. You don't really need to do this much detailing around the edges. This is all can be done with the colored pencil later. But as usual, I have a tendency to start fussing over things. So the areas that are white on the clownfish, we want to get that shadow that our shadow should be the color of whatever is surrounding it, in this case, anemones. The shadow matches up with that dark spot there. Right now, it just looks like a part of the anemone. It won't when I'm done. Hold on, why is there a person at my front door? Give me one second. Oh, it's Matt. Never mind. Okay, and this whole area is really shaded back in here. Again, this will all be cleaned up when we go over it with the pencils. Now I'm gonna do the areas that are gonna be black. I'm gonna go ahead and put the darker purple in there. That way I'm not fighting against the white of the paper once I start that. Just makes it a little easier for me later on. Whenever you're trying to fill something in and get it really dark, when you're up against the white of the paper, it takes a lot more work. But this will make it easier. Let 
and I'm just doing it with the same purples. Because I do not want to make those two colors bleed together. I mean, you can without making a huge mess, but I'm going through so quickly, I don't want to risk it. go much better Oops. almost ready for the colored pencil bit more here let that kind of fade into my anemones so the color transition is softer For those of you on Patreon, if you did not get my message this week or the email, um, I need to post over on Patreon too. But this week's lesson is getting pushed to next week is going to be combined into one bigger lesson because I'm finally painting the horse, very white, like hugely requested horse and oil painting. And it's big. It's 24 by 30 inches. So it is taking a long time. So next week's video will just be really long. Okay, I think we are about ready to make it look good with, actually, I wanna lift a few areas first. Just a couple. Let me dry this. Gonna lift some of this. Although I think using the colored pencil will just be faster. Yeah, let's just skip to colored pencil. Okay, so what I need to do is clean up my zone here. And this will be fun because really look at how ugly this is right now. Watch what happened. Like the difference is huge. When we go on top of this with colored pencil, we are about to make this look so good with very little effort because we put all of this time into this base layer. I just need to get all of these paint brushes out of the way here. You can watch the boys while I do this. You guys aren't doing much over there. Let's 
without treats. These puppies are so sad. Your Patreon pledge of only $4 or more gives them cookies of happiness. Act now and the bad cow gets a treat too. Oh, and you also get over 300 art lessons and a new one every single week, plus other rewards. Sign up at patreon.com slash lockery. Okay, so now I've swapped out all my materials for colored pencil because we are completely done with the watercolor. You wanna make sure whatever you want done with the watercolor is done first. These two are compatible only in that colored pencil being wax or oil-based are going to go on top of your water-based material. The reverse won't work, the watercolor won't stick, and if it does stick, it's not sticking permanently, would not be archival. So that's why we've gotta swap directions there. Now I've gotta pick my colors. So let me just pull out a few pencils that I think would be handy. I've got some polychromos. And there should, if I did my job right, the link should be in the video description of the supplies that I use. some Derwent Lightfast. You know my love of their purples. We definitely need some of those in here. Just start with those. I may want some polychrome or some, uh, what is the word? Some Karen Dosh luminance. My brain shut down there. But what we're going to go with this for now. Actually, I can move this out of the way. And I'm going to put the glassine under my hand as I work on this side. So I don't get, I'm not resting my hand on the work itself. Let's start by figuring out where I want lights. This is the Derwent um, Drawing Chinese White. And look at how, I mean, the color saturation is just amazing because I've already got that color on there. Uh, where are my pencil sharpeners? I don't know if I'm gonna need much in the way of OMS, but if I do, I can safely use it on this and it will not affect anything negatively. It's a little bit, what is this one? That one stands out really well. The dark chrome yellow with the polychromos looks great there. I've got Heather. See how we can clean these up really fast. Does not take much time or work to do because of the watercolor underneath. I don't know if you're like me, sometimes just having that instant gratification, it's fun. It's not that I wanna rush my work 
well, I mean, we're limited time on a live stream, but it's not about rushing it. It's just sometimes you want to get something done and just be happy fast, like quick endorphins. Is that the right word? I think that's the right word. Look how well that sticks. So any areas where it was just fuzzy and not super clean, problem solved, like here. Again, I don't need it exact to the reference photo, it's just general guide there. Like already, like it's just so nice and clean. Makes me so happy. Okay, sharpen pencils. That wind is getting crazy outside. Hopefully that storm holds up and doesn't hit us till we're done here. We're not supposed to get it super bad. Not like Oklahoma and some of you guys in other areas, it is, it looks, I was watching the, uh, what is it, Ryan Hill on YouTube, the Weather Channel, and it looks like some of you guys are going to get hit hard. See here, like I didn't like the shape, I just changed it completely and that pencil sticks so well and shows up so well. Now keep in mind, where I go over with a colored pencil, it's gonna be more opaque, so I don't have the quite the same like transparency that you get with a watercolor, if that matters to you. Get some darker purple, and then this was actually called violet. And I'll show you too with the OMS what I mean by it working so well and it doesn't lift it at all. Oops, why did I clean that? That had yellow all over it. See the watercolor? Stays put. And get that smoother look with the colored pencil I put on where it was a little bit grainy all smoothed out whoops now make sure don't rework that area till it dries this paper it dries pretty quick on though Some more white highlights. See how I can reshape now where my everything was just messy. This one was a hot mess. Let's pull that out. Blend that with odorless mineral spirits again. Oh, 
Aw. So, uh, boys, you guys get got a super chat from Joseph. <laughs> Joseph said, Rob isn't here. The boys need some treats. Do you guys hear that? Did you want a cookie? I think that's a yes. Does this sound? We got poppers this time. Do you guys want two poppers? These are sweet potato poppers. Oops. You want that? Can you back up so everyone can see how cute you are? Oh, yeah, that's very tasty. Gibson's taking it to his bed. I got you too, Gibson. Are you going to come back for the other one, or you're just going to stand over there and eat it in your bed? He always takes his treats to his bed. Okay, one more. Ready? There we go. Say thank you, Joseph. Okay, go back to your bed. Go on. Go lay down. Go lay down. You got your super chat treat. Lay down. Good boys. And down all the way, Gibson. Good boys. They say thank you, Joseph. Okay. So I'm going to blend that out with the OMS. It just gives us that nice smooth look. It's darker when the OMS makes it wet, but when it dries, it'll be more opaque. Anywhere where I'm blending the white especially. So these areas, I need to leave them to dry before I do any more work on them. They don't need a lot more, but. And you look, really look at the difference here. This is what I was talking about. I mean, here where we've just started with colored pencil versus here where it's just kind of messy and wiggly and not quite what we want it to be. Okay. Let me sharpen the white pencil. This one isn't even white, it's Arctic. There's a, with Derwent uh, Lightfast, they have white and they have Arctic. They're both white. It looks the same, I swear. You cannot. Like it is such a minor difference that when you're mixing with other colors, you would never notice the difference. So I use those in interchangeably. And some of these, like this edge is lighter on my reference photo. Uh, and, but like I said, I wasn't copying it exactly. I was using it as a guideline. What I want to do is work with whatever the watercolor has. I don't want to fight against what's there. I mean, some of these I've reshaped, but like here, the highlight, there was a dark on the edge. It looks pretty. Leave it there if it looks pretty. a little bit harder there where I want that really clean line. I think this one's still at $55. If you guys want to bid on it, like this is one I would probably sell for $200, $250 right around that price range. Like if this yeah, if I were to sell this even on the sale price, would be you can get a good deal for this right now. I promise it'll look really good once I start on the clownfish. Okay, let's get some of the shadows in there and then we'll blend the this side of the tentacles. Define these a bit more.
So this one, that is all together. Let's make those actually look like they're a part of the same anemone. There we go. And the link, if you do want to bid on this, is in the video description. And just a reminder, we are having a big live sale to raise money so I can get a better lap. Or I'm using a laptop to lab, live stream. I have more cameras. I can't use them. Like I want to have a camera on my pa camera. Camera is not a word. Maybe in some language. Camera on my palette, but my computer gave me the finger when I tried adding more cameras. So... Um, I've got to upgrade to a PC, like a normal PC, instead of a laptop. And I'll be having a big sale event next week to raise money for that. So I'll have more discounted paintings at a good deal. I don't do those often, so that'll be a fun one. And by not often, I mean I've done it once before ever. Clean up these lines in here. And then we'll blend it and start on the clownfish, which is the part I am looking most forward to. He's gonna look so good. Again, this is odorless mineral spirits at this point. See how it doesn't even affect, it's not lifting the watercolor at all. It only affects the colored pencil. If I were to do this with water, it would only affect the watercolor and not the colored pencil. And if you're tempted, you've gotten this far, and you are tempted to go back and touch something up with watercolor, don't. Just do it with colored pencil at this point. Once you start with colored pencil, just keep it separate. I mean, I guess technically part of the clownfish I could because I haven't started on him, but any of the anemones, I've got this colored pencil all over the place. So I'm going to clean this up later because that line I missed. Okay, a few more spots to blend out. I reserve the right tomorrow to go through and do just a few little touch-ups to clean anything up I might miss tonight because I this is a long one, so I'm staring at it longer than I usually would. And there's a very good chance that I'll see some stuff I want to make even better. So now is when I can start coming through. Let's take my glassine down with black. And I'm really burnishing. I'm pushing really hard right there. And look how nice that stands out. So pretty already. What a difference that makes. Don't get crazy with the black, though. You don't need a lot. And like areas in here, I don't want to shade that with black. I'll switch to magentas or purples. Or nightshade. grumpy face. And I can take a yellow and burnish over this because I don't really need a lot of layers. I can go ahead and burnish instead of worrying about OMS. And I'm just going to pull that out. Burnish is where you're pushing really hard with the pencil, so you were just jamming that into the paper. If you know you need a lot of layers, you don't want to burnish yet. You would keep burnishing for the end if that's the technique you want to use. 
Oops, I don't like that. Hold on. Where is my eraser? Not over here. One second. Go, and I'll just fill that in with Heather to reshape the eye. There we go, much better. That's a, another fun thing to talk about. If you have something go wrong, don't panic. Like, I didn't like the way that line was down too far. Just go over it, rework it till it looks good. Stuff's going to go wrong in your work. What you wanna do is figure out how to fix it. Don't panic when it happens. Know that it's gonna happen and have made so many mistakes early on, you know how to fix it when they do come up. extra dark there because of the shadow with the anemone. So I'm going to do on a lot of this is burnish with my yellowy orange color technical term there. Okay, so I'm gonna blend that by just burnishing over it. So I'm just pushing hard. I'll probably go over that with a little OMS to smooth it out even more. Look at how many colors the, that are in here. This is one of the things, very common thing people will ask or they think, like they'll get frustrated if they're watching a lesson. Well, you're not telling me every color you're using when you change colors. It's not going to help you. It's about your values. Are your darks dark enough? Your lights light enough? The color is not a big deal. Look how many colors I used and how much shading I needed to do to get this clownfish to look the way I wanted him to. Now I'm coming through with some magenta. I'm like, it takes a lot of colors in there. It's not a matter of finding the right single color. If you find the right single color, great. You just did a cartoon. We're just going to mix a bunch of colors. We're going to layer until we like how it looks. I'm gonna go ahead and blend this area out. Actually, let me take it back. I need a little bit more here on that lip is too light. Okay, I'm gonna blend that with my OMS. I've got to be careful where I put that black. I do not want to smudge the black into my yellow. See here, I can go right over it because it was purple. Here, that's black. Around the edge, black. Got to be really careful there. Now this is a bit darker, it's going to dry it lighter. Okay, we're gonna leave that to dry. We're gonna scooch over a bit. Clean up that line by taking colored pencil in the background. Okay. 
Okay, let's get, we've got a lot of that black again. Where did I put, there it is. This is not a straight even line. It's almost like little feathery guys right around here. I'm pushing really hard with this pencil. I want that super dark. Okay, now let's see, we've got black along this fin. Got a little less than a half hour to bid on this guy. Let's start now. This is really, I mean, most of the details in there. At this point, it's when we start focusing on our values. And what do I need? So I'm gonna start getting a lot more of the magentas here. We're gonna darken this up a lot. Actually, should be darker. That's his white stripe. Luckily, that matches really well with the other one already. And don't feel like you have to put colored pencil everywhere. If it looks good, just where the watercolor is, leave that. Lighten up a bit. Oh, I don't know if I want this apricot or let's see which one shows up better. Oh, that's perfect. That makes me really happy. That looks so good. Move that out. Just kind of fade together. See, just it's a layering process. That's the biggest thing I can teach you when it comes to pretty much any medium I work in. Everything's just a layering process. This is not paint by number. It's not going to look good if you do paint by number. This is not put the right color in the right place. It's layer until it looks good. Clownfish is just fading off behind the anemones he's all tangled in. So if you have ever felt intimidated by watercolor, look at what I've accomplished in like such a short amount of time. And I love how it looks. It looked terrible until I went on top with the colored pencil. The colored pencil will allow you to be a bit messier while you get the hang of the watercolor. Or even if you never want to get the hang of watercolor, you just want to use it to, as an underpainting for your colored pencil. Man, does it look good. I'm super excited with how this guy came out. few more highlights and touch-ups and we'll be done and I'll go over your questions. I know we're going to run a little bit late tonight. Moderators, please don't feel like you have to stay if you guys want to get to bed. I won't go. I'll try to keep it short. 
but I do know it will be a little bit later than usual in order for me to get through questions tonight. So right now, see how everything's super dark in here. We want it dark, but I want a little bit lighter in some of these areas, so I need that to dry before I can go back over it. And again, I'm going to come through this with fresh eyes. Whoever wins this one, I think there's still just one bit on it. Hint, hint. Go look at it. Um, I think I love that that was an easy way to get people to go look at my website um, doing these auctions. But anyway, the, I will go through. There's going to be a few little areas I just want to touch up. It'll pretty much look the same, but I have been sitting in front of it for so long. You definitely start to kind of lose sight of what you're doing. So that needs to set for just a moment. Um, while that sets, I need this to dry because it's kind of wet all over. Do one of the things. So one of the things I wanted to talk to you guys or mention tonight, I've been looking through Reddit and through some different online forums um, for art. I am impressed at the bad advice they give. If you ever spend time there or on Facebook groups, I mean, I know we have our own Facebook group, we have our own MeWe group, but be careful of who you're taking advice from. If you ever hear have someone give you some advice and you find it discouraging or you find it weird, like you have a lot of people who are very almost authoritarian on how they view art. Art should be this or art should be all of that thing. Art should be all of this thing. It has to, it has to have all this meaning. It has to have this. If it doesn't inspire such and such or whatever, then it's not real art. All kinds of different rules. Every time I saw some really ridiculous comments, I mean, one girl was saying how exhausting painting, people talk about it being relaxing, but it's so exhausting for her. She'll sit and hours in front of a uh, paint, painting and maybe only put two brush strokes in and it's just so exhausting. And you listen to this stuff and you might think, yeah, you're right. It totally is. You know what? Go look up what these people's art looks like because that one specifically I did. It's terrible terrible I mean we are talking she's been painting for maybe five minutes terrible and I'm not saying someone who's terrible can't be amazing so just to be clear you you we all start terrible but some of these people that are most vocal on giving advice and telling you what you need to feel telling you how you, you need to paint things they're not good they're and this is so common online that people who are spending so much time of their day giving advice putting their two cents into every single thing they're not putting a whole lot of time into their painting because they're too busy telling everyone else how to live their life or how to do their art. Be aware of that with a lot of the advice on Reddit, on Facebook, on all of these things. If you can, check out what their art looks like. Some of the harshest critics of my own work, I looked up their work and it's like, are you kidding me right now? You're kidding. You have to be kidding because I'm. I, you, you're kidding. I know you are. There's no way you thought you could give me advice or that you're in any place to give anybody. So anyway, I just want to throw that out there because I know it can be very discouraging when you hear certain things that people say and you're like, yeah, it, it's, it's a, it, it's a thing. Um, Reddit, not the place to go for, for art advice typically. Um, okay. They're too busy complaining and not actually completing work. I think we should be about dry enough on this that we can go ahead and do a few little highlights, few little cleaning up some stuff. Um, let's see, just about done here. I think this guy is still at $55, which, oh, no, no, we're up. We are at 60. 65 now. That's a bit better. And he remember, he's going to come mat it. I'll show you in just a moment what that will look like. Actually, I'll show you now because we can choose the mat now, and that gives me a little bit more time to let it dry. So whoever wins this, you're going to need to let me know which color mat you want. Let me open this. So you can get these just a simple, basic 5x7 mat in this case. That's for, And it makes it an overall size of an 8x10, which fits a standard 8x10 mat or frame. Makes it super easy to frame. Just any, like any frame that has glass, you just go anywhere. You could go to Walmart if you wanted and get a frame there. So these are going to be your options. We've got the white. So you can see what that does. It really pulls this area out. And then we have the black, which makes the black stand out. It kind of draws your attention from the darks to the light. So these are the two frame choices. Honestly, they both, I normally don't lean towards white, but I think I kind of like the white better myself on this one. You could go, it's going to be personal preference. Whoever wins, you get to choose which one you want it to be in. But I will have this all matted for you. So all you need to do is pop it into any 8x10 frame. 
Okay, let's see if that's dry enough. Oh, that's a hard call. They both look good. So I've got a lighter yellow. I'm just gonna get a few little highlights here. I don't know how well that shows on the camera, but it looks really good in person. So we've got some detailing in here. We can start adding. yellow to be a bit more bold. These little details will make such a difference, just taking a little bit more time. I'm gonna take that magenta right along the black. So I've got a nice transition between the black and the orange. bitey face. I can go over this and I'm pushing pretty hard where I want that to just glow. It makes that yellow super vivid. And I've got to clean this up here. So these are the areas that I was talking about, like little things like that I'll miss from sitting here so long. So I'll touch those up before I actually mat it tomorrow. That wind is going crazy out there. That storm must be getting close. spend a little bit more time on the edges here. I want him to be super crisp. I do not want that to be a fuzzy edge where this is, you know, your more macro type shot where you're zoomed in. that up a bit there, pushes that fin back. And here we want that, pull that white back out, just a little bit there. And then we've got the edge of the fin because that's going forward. We'll put the highlight there. And then this definitely needs to be defined. I am pushing pretty hard to make sure that's a nice clean edge. And 
this is just out of focus back here, kind of blurred. Definitely want to get it a bit darker though. I don't have much variation. And I'm gonna go back over this with the OMS one more time. We're just about done with this. Now, of course, you can take the time and spend more time and get more detail. That's completely up to you when you work on something like this. But look how much you can get done in a very short amount of time. Very fun. I love this combination of colored pencil and watercolor. I'm gonna take a bit of my, where is my nightshade? I lost it, there it is. I really wanna darken this up back here more. And I'm gonna blend that out so it fades in with the pencil that's there. But this will push the body back some. Nightshade go, almost there, so close. And we'll blend that. Jail, thank you so much for the super chat. Hold on, I will blend this and then give the boys their treat. Hopefully they didn't just hear me say the T word. Thank you so much. You guys have no idea how much I appreciate that. Plus it's really fun to get the boys all worked up and excited. Let them have some fun for making them lay down in here. Actually, the funny thing is, the the greyhounds actually love the live streams. They have been waiting in here since, because I dragged both beds in. They've been laying in here on those beds waiting for me for like about seven o'clock, so about an hour earlier. They're both in here waiting because they knew that I always give them a treat right before we start for being good boys and laying down. Or if I get ice, they know when I get ice water, I'm getting ready to start the live stream. They'll do the same thing. They, they get all excited. Okay. Like I said, there's gonna be a couple things I wanna clean up tomorrow and I'm not gonna sign this just yet because this is all super wet and I need that to dry, but there's gonna be a few little minor touch-ups that I'm definitely, I know I'm missing, but oh, I'm so happy with how this guy came out. He looks better in person. I know I always say that, but he really does because this area here around his face, you're not, I don't know if you can see the difference, the yellows and oranges in here, it's not really showing on camera as good as it is in person. Oh. I'm so excited. Boys, do you want a treat? Jell gave you, JL, Jell. I'm butchering your name and I apologize, but you have been gifted a super chat, boys. You want a cookie? I think that's a yes. Back up, back up, Wade. You know that that one means. I've been teaching him lately. Back up. That was not backing up. Me pushing on your snoot does not count as following the directions. One more? Okay. There you go. Okay, go lay down. Take it to your bed. Go boys. Go lay down. To your bed. Down. And now we will start going through. We've got um, some topics to go over and some questions to answer from you guys. Wait, go lay down. Lay down. Okay, let me pull up Discord. So a couple of things I wanted to mention. Must have studio items. This one's fun. A few things that we might not always think about, but I think they're so, so helpful when you're making an art studio. If you're like me, I've used like bedrooms. It's always the master bedroom I take over for my art studio. Um, luckily, Matt is okay with my weird crap that I do. But my five must-haves. One, if, especially if you're in an apartment or if you've got carpet, get go to like Home Depot or Lowe's, whatever hardware store, get yourself a drop cloth. I like the waterproof ones the best, but get yourself a 
What are you doing? Boys are doing something weird over there. Get yourself a drop cloth. Put that down on the wall and or on the floor. Cover your carpet with it. And then I'll usually put some area rugs to make it cute on top. That way you're not doing what I did when I was a 17-year-old artist trying to cut the paint out of my carpet before my parents saw where I spilled. You can avoid that completely with a, just a, a painter's drop cloth. But I get the canvas one, so it's comfortable to walk on. Not super noisy. Not the cheapy paper ones, like one that you're going to leave there for years. And I wanted to make mine cuter, so I did put the area rugs over it. But I, I tucked it under all of the furniture, so it's just wall-to-wall, -wall, covered everything. That way I could vacuum it. It didn't pull up because the furniture is weighing it down. But that's like a must-have is protecting your floors. If you have hardwood floors... Be careful too, because you can really ruin them with the paints. I've luckily, we did tile throughout this house for that reason. So I can spill all over this and it's fine. Super easy to get up. But if you have carpet or hardwood floors, you want to protect those. And those are some of the ideas for that. The next thing is for the light. You need good lighting. Do not do what I did when I was younger and think I could just put like spotlights with regular household light bulbs in them. I oftentimes was quite surprised at what that looked like at the next, the, the next day, I would take it outside and look at it in like daylight, like normal, like 5200 Calvin or whatever it's called. It was not the same color as what I thought I had. Get a good daylight bulb. The one that I use, I have linked, I think in the video description, the, I use the easel clamp light one, but they've got floor ones. They've got all kinds of different models that work. I've got the Amazon link in the video description that work really, really well. But the one that I use is not currently in stock. I don't know why, but that's the brand that I use and the lighting is great. You want something that you can turn up or down. You want something that's easy to adjust to move around. You also want to keep in mind, it's ideal for you to have your, your easel lamp or wherever you're working in a table. You want that at about a 45 degree angle from your artwork. You're not trying to get it at a 90 degree angle because you're going to, the glare will be horrible, but something that can adjust. So lights are number two. Third thing, TV trays. Oh my gosh, these are priceless. Well, not priceless. They're, you know, not that terribly expensive, but they're so useful and something that you know you're going to get paint all over. I do it all the time, but they're all my TV trays are covered in paint. I don't use them for eating. I use them for everything else. Holding, if I rearranged or I'm working on a big project and I don't have room on my normal table, I can use it to hold my water. I can use it to hold my palette. I can use it, use two of them to hold a really big canvas while I varnish it if it's too big to sit on my normal table that I varnish my work on. You can use them. You can adjust, move them. They're lightweight. They're fairly inexpensive for how useful they are, but that is for me a must have for the art studio. Number four, an easel or table. Don't get a cheapy A-frame easel that's lightweight that as soon as you put pressure on your, your canvas when you're painting, the whole thing flops backwards. You don't want that. Get an H-frame. There's one, It's it'll be in, once I edit this, I'll put the link in the video description. There's a few on Amazon that are actually really good. You can check any local art supply store. You don't have to get a super expensive H-frame easel, but get something like that that's heavier weight so that when you're adding pressure, it's not moving back. And the nice thing with the H frames is you can put like what I've done here, my drawing board, this is on my normal, if you can see behind it, that's my normal big H frame easel back there. And I can add all kinds of pressure, push really hard, and it, the easel's not moving. It's not going anywhere. Even the less expensive H-frame easels, this is an expensive one, but you can get the lighter weight, less expensive ones, they're still going to be good. The tabletop H-frame type, not as good. I definitely prefer the floor models. They're not going to move around as much. If you get the tabletop one, they are likely to scoot back as you work. If you get yourself one of those shelving liners, that rubbery type shelving liner, you can get it at like Target, Walmart, wherever, put that down first, and then the tabletop one on top, it's less likely to move. So if you're working on smaller pieces, that's an option to make the tabletop ones work better. But that is something that you definitely, something that's adjustable ideally. So those are just super, super helpful compared to like the cheapy A-frame ones. If you've ever tried an easel and thought, this isn't for me, it may have been the type of easel you were working on. I know some people prefer to just paint flat because they didn't like the results they got with the easel. Try a good easel. You may have different results. The last thing, which is kind of unusual from Ikea, they have these shelves, these cheapy, like you can buy parts. You get just the shelf part itself, just the legs itself. Like all these parts come individual. You can build super customized things. So if you are like me, the room that my studio was in several years ago was tiny. And that doubled as my bedroom, my living room, my dog crates were in there, my art studio. It was every, I was in the tiniest room for many, many years. These cheap, 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 what? Try that again. These cheap shelves from Ikea, 
I'll put a link in the video description to one that's already put together, but you can, not the live stream description, the one I'll edit later, but you can customize those so it fits like, let's say one shelf just fits eight by 10 canvases. You can line up your eight by tens and then you have your next shelf fits your larger size, but you can customize how those shelves are very, very well. They come, it's an unfinished wood, so you can paint them and make them look however you want, but it's so, so convenient if you're in a tight space, but you need storage. You wouldn't believe what I was able to fit on those. I still use them in a storage closet for my canvases. Like they're wonderful. So those are some of my tips for different things um, to use for an art studio. If you're putting one together, if you already have one, let me go ahead and look at any questions that came in through Discord. Oh, the auction's going up. Oh, reload. We're up to, whoops, cancel. What is happening here? We're up to $75 for this clown fish. Yay. Okay. Um, what am I looking for? You're getting, whoever gets this, you're getting a deal. I'm excited for you. Um, come on. Open up. Pay attention to what you're doing. I'm looking for Discord. Here we go. Okay. Violet Sky, oh, I'm wearing the wrong glasses. No wonder I can't see. I'm like, this doesn't work. Violet Sky says, I have a few unfinished paintings that I want to gesso over so I can reuse the canvas, but I can't remember if they're oil or acrylic. Going to use oil-based gesso just in case. Is there anything different with oil-based gesso? I've never used it. I haven't either. That's probably a safe thing to do. There have been a few paintings I did where I'm like, was that an oil or acrylic? I'm varnishing it with an oil varnish just in case because it's safe for both. So I think that going with an oil varnish is safe just in case. Tip though, before you varnish it, when you do something like that, lightly sand that down so there's a bit more tooth. If you build up to where it's super smooth, the varnish doesn't stick as well. It'll stick, but not as well. So I would take a sandpaper, maybe like a 320 grit sandpaper. Is that a grit? Is that a thing or am I making up numbers? But around that, that thing, lightly go over that, sand it down before you gesso it. But I've not used an oil gesso myself, so I don't really have advice there other than sand it a little bit first. And I think you're smart if you weren't sure if it was oil or acrylic, because that's what I do with my varnishes. I've had a few paintings where I'm like, I don't know. We're going with the, the oil varnish just in case. Um, Gail said, I bought a 10.5 tablet for reference photos. I use a glass drawing table, not an easel. What do you or would you recommend to position my device, such as a clamp or stand? I'm not sure I've not used that because that 10.5 is not big, so you don't need a lot. You know what's convenient though is a music stand. That is what I'm using. Something to, actually this one may be for computers because it's a heavier weight one. But something that light, something that would be a music stand or even a lightweight easel. If you're working on a table, that A-frame easel I was talking about earlier, which is kind of terrible for most things, works great for that. You can set your, um, you'd probably have to put a board behind it first or like a piece of cardboard so it didn't fall between the thing. But a small A-frame in that case would be in an, a very inexpensive way to go or something that would hold a book. If you've got like what they do for cookbooks, you just need a little something small like that. Do a Google search on Amazon for cookbook holder or book holder, book display would be a, a search that you might want to use. But a small, cheap A-frame would work fine if you set it on something. You can set that on the TV tray next to you. As far as a clamp, I don't know. Look You'll have to Google it. I don't know. There's probably some cool devices or not. You Google it or Amazon probably has all kind of kinds of things to do like holder for tablet holder, tablet display. I just search those in and see what comes up. But I'm not sure other than like if you if you're working on a table, like flat at a table and this is sitting next to you on the table, I would just use an A-frame easel. Violet Sky said, "What are your thoughts on painting the sides of a canvas? Solid versus uh, color?" versus carrying the painting around. What is your preference? So I actually have a video just about this and you can see the difference in painting it around versus the like what to do with the edges. So we do have one if you do a search on, on YouTube where I show you exactly what I mean, but absolutely continue the painting around the edges whenever possible. I used to just paint the edges solid black 
sometimes that can work or solid whatever the color of the painting is it works but if they're gonna if the per the buyer hangs it without a frame this is more important on a box canvas a thicker canvas than a thin canvas a thin canvas a solid color is, is generally generally fine but a thick canvas especially a nice box canvas continue that around the side every time because even if you go with the perfect solid color it feels unfinished it never it looks very amateur like it will always look nicer if the painting continues around the edge which is something that I've started doing over the last few years I didn't used to and the difference is huge on the paintings that I continued that around. So definitely recommend continuing around the edge. Clark Feinert said, how do you like the Mimic brushes by Creative Mark? Love them. Like I, they're kind of my go-to. I tend to grab them more than anything else. I really like them. Um, JL, who I'm butchering your name again, and I apologize. Jell, 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 I, I suck. I'm sorry. Um, said, what other mediums have you used with watercolor apart from colored pencils? Love the painting with ink and watercolors. Charcoal works pretty well with it. Uh, I think that's all I've really used. I can't think of anything else I've gone over. You could go over it with graphite. I don't know why you would want. I'm already sitting in here and seeing things that I'm going to clean up just a little bit tomorrow. Um, let's see. Yeah, I haven't really done that much mixed media. Usually I just go with colored pencil, but charcoal would probably give you a really cool look. It'd be a very stylized look. Um, let's see. You use the same brush cleaner for oils and acrylics. Yes, I use the Masters. The Masters? Yeah, I think it's the Masters is the one that I use for cleaning my, both. And the same one, like I don't even get a separate one. They can both be cleaned in the same pot. Like, I mean, not have cleaned them all together at the same time. But yeah, you're fine with um, sharing there. Uh, has my clownfish... Swapped sexes. I heard that fishes could do that. Clownfish are one of them. Well, they all start male and one, the dominant one will become the female. So as babies, they're all boys. And then whichever one is dominant becomes the female. Whether she's with a huge group of clownfish, you'll have one female and a whole bunch of males. If something happens to that fish, the next dominant fish in the line will turn, even as an adult, will turn to a female. So like if there's a breeder of clown, uh, one guy who I know, um, Rod's Fish Food, he was telling me about his original clownfish. They were like 30 years old. The female, they just kept breeding and breeding. And then the female finally passed of old age. The male, he got another clownfish, a little one for the one that was the male. And the male, because that was now the dominant, the bigger, older fish, turned into the female. And then the new fish stayed the male. But they don't switch back. So like once they're female, they're female. That's it. They're not going back to male. It's a one-time deal. Um, Gracious Valley said, do you need to be a patron to be in the Discord group? I don't get on Facebook or MeWe anymore. I do miss your art com community the most. Oh, um, honestly, yeah, it's just for Patreon. The Discord I'm using right now is just for Joseph, myself, and Nick. Uh, we should probably put Clark Fine Art in there too. But um, it's just for them giving me your guys's questions. Otherwise, I, it's hard for me to scroll through and find the questions. But there, um, I do have one for Patreon. But yeah, you'd have to be, I think even at a $4 level, you get it. We don't use it that often. I would probably use it more if other people used it more. But I bet other people who are patrons would use it more if I used it more. Probably should start doing that. Uh, let's see. When you finish a watercolor, this is Angela said, when you finish a watercolor piece, is there a way to like seal it somehow? So there are different things you can seal with it. In this case, I would have to make sure it was okay with oil or with colored pencil and watercolor. I'm not going to seal it with anything. It just needs to be framed behind glass. It doesn't need to be sealed. Like there's no, I really don't see much benefit in doing it. You just make sure if you do decide to use some sort of a finish on it or a spray that you test it on a sample. And whenever you test something, you want to test it on the same type of paper, same type of paint, because sometimes certain sprays just don't play nice with certain mediums. So or like even with colored pencil, there are some sprays that I've heard people had horrible results where it almost made the, the polychromos area bubble up, but it was fine with Prismacolor. So uh, in, they honestly, they don't need to be sprayed. So I don't spray them with anything. Why risk it? There's not a real benefit. Just it should be framed behind glass and that should be enough. But they do make them. Just make sure you test it with the same materials you used your artwork because you don't want to spray your artwork to find out that it went horribly wrong. Is gouache better or worse, basically the same as watercolor when used as a base or underpainting for the colored pencils? Gouache is, it's just opaque watercolor. It's essentially the same thing. It depends on like how translucent you want any given area, but gouache would absolutely work too. Watercolor is your translucent version. Gouache is the opaque version, but same, pretty much the same thing. 
Art of Raven D said, I have the 100 set of Derwent Lightfast. And I was like, really, Derwent? When was I fiddling with Arctic and white pencils? Yeah, or when I was fiddling with the Dur the white and Arctic. Yeah, they're pretty much the same pencil. Like, it, it's, I don't even know. Like, if you put them both on white paper, you might see a minor change. But you're never doing, like, you would never, it's one of those things where I'm like, really? I mean, I'm happy to have two whites, but it's, it's a color I go through a lot. Or I guess not a color color. But yeah, it, it was kind of a weird, I don't even know why they yeah I don't know um okay what did this guy go for who won I won't announce it in case they don't want their name announced yay $80 that's a good deal I'm excited for you and I promise to make it there's a few touch-ups I want to do because I know I can perfect them a little bit more if give me like 20 minutes of focusing with clean eyes I'm not doing it tonight my eyes are just that was a long one for sure so anyway thank you guys for joining next week is the big sale I have so much there were, last count I think I was close to 30 things that are going to be for a sale oh we've got one more question it just came in uh, Dolphin Soul said, I can't see, will you start the monthly challenge on Patreon? Ah, oh, I got to do that. Yes. So I keep, it's on my to-do list and it keeps getting moved back. I need, I don't have one for this month. I don't have one for last month. So I need, I owe you guys too. Yes, I have to do that again. So I will absolutely get two of them done. I keep searching and then I get caught up doing something else and I have been a failure. I owe you guys two of them. I will get that done. So yeah. And then we've got the, um, thank you for reminding me. If you could do me a huge favor, if I don't get that done in the next couple of days, ask me again because I'll start feeling guilty like, oh, I'm failing and I'll get it done. So I owe you. Um, thank you guys so much for joining. Thank you to our moderators. Uh, Clark Fine Art, she's got a channel here on YouTube. She does live streaming. Nick has a channel. He's not been making videos, but super helpful still. And of course, everyone knows Joseph also live streams every Monday, except for yesterday, or not yesterday, day before. Um, I think he was missing some pencils, something, something about pencils not coming in. So, but check them out. They've all got art channels here on YouTube. Great content. Thank you guys so much for watching. And I will see you next week with our big art sale. I will be posting some um, previews of some of the stuff that's going to be available over on Instagram and MeWe this week. So maybe Facebook, but why? No one sees anything I post on Facebook, so it's kind of like, eh, why bother? Thank you guys again for joining. Thank you to the lovely person who won this that I will make even better for you tomorrow. And oh, let me know. Don't forget to message me. I don't know if it said on there if you want the black or the white mat. I'm going to show you again really quick just so you've got that final look. White or black. The black has a white trim on the inside, so you kind of get both there. Oh, that's a hard one. Anyway, up to you. You just let me know which you, one you like. I'm leaning towards black now. I don't know. I don't know. They both look good. So thank you guys so much for joining, and I will see you next week for the big sale. Yay! Bye! Yeah.